leaving ancient Masada. It was a real thrill to see it again. Rachel's birthday has another few hours to run. And we traveled north to Tiberias in the Galilee for a birthday dinner that's going to make a memory. It's my birthday today, and we are celebrating by eating at the Bruna restaurant in Galilee. Local fair, eggplant, hummus, plenty of delicious side dishes. pita bread and salad. It looked so good we were all taking pictures and it tasted great too. Main courses were steak, lamb and kebab. And of course, no Galilee meal is complete without St. Peter's fish, the tilapia, dessert to finish. It's a bless from the Bible. Ah. If somebody told you, Admir yeah. So when your when birthday, birthday, so the, they, they wish you going to live at the age, age of 120 years. And this ah. is a bless. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Nate had booked us an Airbnb overlooking Galilee, and the location was great. A nice balcony on which to have breakfast and coffee, and the beautiful Mediterranean weather continued to impress. The Biblical Sea of Galilee reminding us of so many familiar stories, though we did have some problems with the place, and headed into Tiberias as my good friends at the Rom Beach Hotel had offered us a deal we couldn't refuse. Believe it or not, I've stayed here several times, and it is without doubt my favorite hotel in the whole world. I've known the owners for years and we were given a suite overlooking Galilee that included the best breakfast in Israel, the best view in Israel and one of the best evening meals to boot. If you visit Israel, don't miss staying here. After a day exploring, there's nothing like a dip in the pool overlooking the lake and a relaxing evening. Thank you. We didn't have Wi-Fi connection, now we do. Rachel got a FaceTime happy birthday, free Wi-Fi here. The sun comes up over those Golan Heights in the distance. A tourist boat sails past. If you're a Christian, it's a wonderful experience to sail on Galilee, following Jesus' footsteps, if that's the word. The scenery has changed little in 2,000 years. When I edit a film and show extensive shots from the hotel window, you can be sure we had a great view. Time to explore. We're very close to many places mentioned in the New Testament, and we want to visit some of these places. We're driving north along the shores of Tiberias. First stop, Tabga. The place where the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 is said to have taken place. The site's name comes from the Greek, Hectopagon, Seven Springs. It's a striking place, 
very peaceful. Maintained by Benedictine monks, they certainly have created a beautiful place for pilgrims to meditate, to imagine, to wonder. The peacock is an ancient Christian symbol of eternal life. Rachel was on camera too, so we were getting great shots. It was indeed a place just to soak in the peaceful atmosphere. A big thank you to the Benedictine monks. Next stop is perhaps the most well-known site in Galilee, Capernaum, the town that Jesus made the base for his ministry. It's the home of Peter, Andrew, James and John, and the ruins of Peter's house are still visible. Matthew was also born here. It's not surprising that nowadays it's a popular place of pilgrimage. It's a remarkable archaeological site in that it's been very well preserved. This artifact, believed to depict the cart that carried the Ark of the Covenant. The remains of village houses are still here. ancient streets where Jesus walked, where he lived, and where many miracles were done. It was not a small town, 1,500 people lived here. This is Peter's house, where the paralyzed man was let down through the roof, writing on the walls, indicating it was later used as a church. Now a building sits over the site. They call it a church, but it's surely a viewing platform with windows all around and a glass floor to see down. I have to say, I felt the modern building ruined the ruins. If ruins can be ruined, that is. This is the limestone synagogue built in the 3rd or 4th centuries over the site of the ancient one built of basalt stone, parts of which can still be seen. It is not the actual synagogue that was there at the time of Jesus. It's built upon the site of it. This is a drawing of what it would have looked like. Remarkable for a village of only 1,500 people. Stone benches were set along the eastern and western aisles. An interesting fact that even Michael Caine doesn't know 
is that Capernaum is used as an English word meaning a shambles. Don't ask me how I know. Some things are not even on Google. Outside, a statue of Peter. We've just been able to visit Capernaum, uh, the home of Peter and some of the other disciples and where, where they were called. And we have seen the house where he lived and we've seen the synagogue that Jesus would have visited, well, built on that synagogue, a third, third to fourth century new synagogue, and uh, see artifacts too from uh, those times. Our exploration now continues with a visit to the Mount of Beatitudes. It is four in the afternoon as we continue our visits to the biblical sites of Galilee. And our next stop is the Mount of Beatitudes, a beautiful place that overlooks the Sea of Galilee and is the traditional site of the Sermon on the Mount, otherwise known as the Beatitudes. The evening sun enhancing a spectacular view but first things first, pomegranate juice. As usual, Rachel persuaded the men to let her have a go at juicing the fruit. Do I just leave it and wait? That's it. That's it? That's it? Not even a second one? He managed to put up with her. And even Nate had a try. The drink was delicious and the price okay. He warned Rachel about what can happen occasionally, and it did. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. You turned it off? No. Part of the fun is meeting people. This guy was great. The gardens were serene, relaxing, peaceful, a pleasure to be here. We even got to see the sunset. As usual, they had to have some crazy fun.
inside the church they were practicing their singing, a natural reverb creating a nostalgic atmosphere as the sun set. Even the moon came to listen. Back at the hotel, it was time for the first class Ron Beach Hotel buffet dinner. This hotel never ceases to impress. It's a family run business and there's always a friendly welcome and excellent service. The joy of this hotel is that we get an excellent start to the day and an excellent end to the day. And a great night's sleep. What do we have today, ma'am? Beef. Beef. Sunrise next morning, the emotive Sea of Galilee, a sight that certainly inspires the imagination. Rachel is still in the land of Nod, having nodded off last night. I'm up early shooting the sunrise from the hotel window. As my friend George would say, Hey little darling, here comes the sun. Nate is reading his Bible, looking at Galilee and profoundly stating that this is one place where Jesus definitely did walk. the fisherman heading home after his stint. A tour group getting the early morning cruise. The good news for us is that we're about to enjoy the best breakfast in Tiberias. Breakfast time. Uh, as much as you can get in there. <laughs> That's the view out of the window. Very nice breakfast. Beautiful sunny day. The food is so good, we put on weight just looking at it. How many hotels have a honeycomb at the cereal bar? It's early December, off season. The groups that were here left early to sightsee. Just had breakfast. Nice sunny day again and getting ready for a nice day in Israel. It's difficult to describe how pleasant the weather is. Warm, not hot, sunny, very clear, and a slight breeze. That's where one group had their briefing this morning. The setting of the hotel is A1.
The flags here representative of the nationalities who have stayed here in the past. The layout of the rooms ensuring everybody gets a great view of Galilee. So after breakfast we walked outside and simply enjoyed the location in the gardens. It was a joy just to be here, right on the shores of the lake. Nate and Rachel actually discussing school days in Hong Kong. Watch in a minute, Dad's gonna come say, we gotta get moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Come on, we're gonna get tanned today. I need to get some shorts. See, you all made a mistake. You don't know where it's at. Come on, hairy feet. Shopping tonight, Rachel. Yeah, well, it's a bit late tonight. Hey, look, we're wearing Guernsey. <laughs> Where's my camera? Nice. Hi! So here we are in uh, the Ron Beach Hotel, and uh, it's beautiful. We're having a great time. <laughs> This is the Ron Beach. As one can guess, there's a beach here, albeit a small one. And some small fish too. We're about to continue our exploration. Next stop, Zipuri, also known as Sephiris. After a relaxing morning, we jumped into the hire car to explore Galilee. The first stop is the ancient archaeological site of Zippori, also known as Sepphoris, located in central Galilee, not far from Nazareth, an amazing place rich in history and architecture that includes Hellenistic, ancient Jewish, Roman, Byzantine, Islamic, Crusader, Arab and Ottoman remains and Rachel is really enjoying the experience of history. The first mosaic we encountered was the mythological story of Orpheus and his wife Eurydice, who was killed by a snake bite. He is inconsolably playing his harp. Never look back. In late antiquity, 3rd to 8th centuries, it was believed to be the village where Anna and Joachim, the parents of the Virgin Mary, lived. Here are the ruins of the 5th century basilica that have been excavated at the site, honoring the birth of Mary, though some sources say that she was born in Jerusalem. It's been proposed that Jesus, while working as a carpenter and mason in Nazareth, may have traveled to Sepphoris with Joseph and his brothers to work here when it was being built. Lord Nazareth is only six miles from here. We then visited what's known as the Nile House, 
where an elaborate mosaic floor was discovered depicting annual celebrations in Egypt when the Nile overflowed. This is the Nile mosaic depicting four different scenes. First, beyond the Nile, then announcing the good news, measuring the Nile's height, and then, quote, Egypt is the gift of the Nile. The floors were decorated with colorful mosaics. To produce the mosaics, artists used thousands of stones per square meter in 18 different colors and shades. Among the rooms of the southern wing of the Nile building was a toilet. Here's Nate shooting Rachel. We're here in Zippori, and while it was established back oh, about 1000 BCE, it wasn't until the Romans conquered it in 63 BC that it really set up. You can see behind me the a perfect example of a Roman road. And if you look closely, you can still see the grooves that the wagon wheels created is it true that British Railways rails have the same width as Roman chariot wheels? Or is it a myth? Well, it's easy. You can measure these Roman chariot grooves all over the world. And yes, they are four feet, eight and a half inches. They are the same as the British train rails. Coincidence or design? Well, it's a long story. Many of the cacti here were apparently parasites on trees. We have two cameras on this film. Here Rachel is shooting me, shooting Nate. The cacti were all over the place but certainly colourful. Next, the house of Dionysus, the Roman Emperor. Mosaics adorning the floors. So we ascend the ancient steps. That's the theatre, you can see some of the steps already. The structures are replicas of what it would look like if it was still stone. Roman amphitheatres appear all over the Mediterranean. Then the fortress built by the Crusaders, built on the remains of an earlier structure The doorway, with its decorative arch, built in the 18th century. A centaur mosaic, 
They were the ones who rounded up the bulls, half men, half horse. The fortress now houses an exhibit of archaeological finds. From here, the Byzantine era storehouse can be seen to the south. The spectacular view from the fortress roof echoes the words of the ancient sages of the city who said it was perched on top of the mountain like a bird. In the distance is Nazareth. Then we go to the building which houses the main attraction. Mosaics from the time of Dionysus. Amazing mosaics. Then the famous Mona Lisa of the Galilee. And other mythological depictions. Here the face of a beautiful maiden captivating. I actually prefer it to the Mona Lisa. The artist certainly caught the moment. We then visited Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. The name in Hebrew is derived from Nazar, one of the Hebrew words for branch, which appears to allude to the prophetic messianic words in Isaiah, from the root of Jesse a branch will come forth. We wanted to visit the model Nazareth village, which depicts life in the first century when Jesus lived here. It's a fascinating place to visit and much care has gone into making it as authentic as possible. With actors playing the parts in traditional dress. The sheep and goats the watchtower, the sheepfold, and fascinating aspects of life at that time. We then learned interesting facts about the olive press. I would take by hand the olive mash and fill the sides of the basket with the olive mash. The olive mash is obtained here. The olives are added and crushed, ready to be put in the olive press. The press being an elaborate contraption with weights added to press the olives 
and get the olive oil. Then we start adding weight and hence pressure to the stack of baskets. Uh, we'll add the weight of the cantilever beam and possibly some stone weight and we'll get more oil come out. Uh, that oil was used for food and for medicine, for perfume and for cosmetics. And then uh, we try and get the rest of the oil out in the third extraction. We'll add all the stone weights. Uh, we have three weights. They're about 500 kilograms each. Uh, and that adds tremendous pressure here uh, to our stack of baskets. We're going to get more oil. This oil is a bit dirtier, lower in quality, but that's okay. It was used to light lamps and to produce soap. The Hebrew for olive press is intriguing. In Hebrew, an olive press, the word for it is gat shmanim, two words actually, gat shmanim, a press of oils, literally. Um, and so uh, that's the word for this in Hebrew. That is where we get the word Gethsemane, gat shmanim in Hebrew. And in the New Testament, of course, uh, it tells us that Jesus and his disciples, after having their final meal together, their last Passover meal, go to Gethsemane, uh, and Jesus begins to be troubled in his spirit. Uh, and you might say he's under pressure, emotional, mental, spiritual pressure, because he knows that he is going to be betrayed, suffer, and die the next day. And he begins to pray to the Father, to God. And uh, it tells us he's under so much pressure as he prays, in his sweat come out drops of blood. And Jesus, under pressure in the Garden of Gethsemane, the olive press, uh, goes and prays three times to the Father, just like the olives are crushed under tremendous pressure three times to obtain their precious olive oil. Next, we walked over to Joseph's workshop, Joseph being the husband of Mary. <laughs> various chisels all right and he uses a smooth um, volcanic stone to sharpen his tools and he uses a rough stone like sandpaper a drill Then the uh, wine press. Probably wash their feet and then tread on the grapes. Okay? Yeah. And after about four weeks, uh, the juice ferments and it becomes new wine. After that, Hannah's workshop. She's making rope from hemp and also spinning, dyeing and weaving wool. There's even a synagogue here. Finally, a Roman soldier, a Roman cross, and a Jewish tomb, making the New Testament come to life. By the time we'd explored it, it was already getting dark. 
and we have to drive back to Tiberias. We've had another great day in the Holy Land. The Nazareth village being an excellent place to visit. As we look out the window at the Ron Beach Hotel, the sun pokes its head over the Golan Heights to illuminate the Sea of Galilee, welcoming another sunny day. Breakfast in a delightful setting as we plan the day. A cool breeze fluttering the flags. The mist blanketing the eastern shores of Galilee. The music of the waves heralding another day in this legendary place. After breakfast, a stroll around the garden by the pool. It's a beautiful hotel. Back to the room to prepare for the day. Then we're off to explore. A leisurely 50-minute drive due west, past Mount Tabor. Our destination today is Tel Megiddo, also known as Armageddon, which the Bible states will be the site of the final battle on earth though many battles have been fought here. It's now a national park. Get ready. This is going to be a fascinating trip. The city of Megiddo played a prominent role in the history of the ancient Near East. Strategically located, it controlled the road that linked Egypt with Mesopotamia. Rachel eager to explore what in 2005 was named as a World Heritage Site complete with archaeological artifacts. It was actually ruled by Egypt for 500 years from 1500 BC. It became an Israelite city sometime between the 10th and 9th centuries BC and was the administrative center for the Jezreel Valley. The exact time the city gate was built is difficult to determine. We are thus looking at 3,000 year old ruins. We had two cameras shooting, Rachel and Nate yeah, taking oh, turns this. with the AX100. This is the remains of the actual gate. Perhaps these people are walking where Solomon once walked. Certainly, we were surrounded by ancient history and it was really special. This is a wonderful day. What's the weather like? It's nice. 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 I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> Rachel's comment, an allusion to the fact that when I talk about the weather, I always say it's beautiful. 
This is the stable area where the stables were kept. And uh, nearby is the next to it, the palace. There's a very nice breeze blowing at this time. So although it's sunshine and quite warm really, the nice cool breeze makes it wonderful. It's mentioned in many places in the Bible, being one of the places defeated by Joshua and one of the cities built by King Solomon. It's also the place where the Bible tells us two kings of Judah, Ahaziah and Josiah, were killed. Perhaps its greatest claim to fame that it's the site of Armageddon, stated in the Bible in Revelation, to be the final battle at the end of days, where the forces of good will defeat the forces of evil. Clearly in times past an important city, this grain silo having a capacity of 450 cubic meters. Dates still growing here. There were even two palaces here, the northern and the southern, both around 3,000 years old. Here are what are believed to be the stables of Solomon. Next time, we'll explore the round Canaanite mound used as a place of worship for centuries. Take a walk through the tunnel that contained the water system fed by a spring ride a chariot and see a model of what it was like in times past. As we continued our exploration, we encountered the great Canaanite temple. The circular altar was part of a much larger complex. Then we entered the tunnel that supplied Tel Megiddo with water. Some say it was built by King Ahab and others that it was late Bronze Age. It's certainly an impressive construction. It consists of a square shaft, 35 meters deep. The bottom of which opens into a tunnel bored through rock that goes on for 
100 meters to a pool of water. This meant in times of siege that water could be obtained without having to leave the tell. It was a great experience to actually walk through the ancient tunnel. The outer entrance was blocked to stop invaders entering. Nate then insisted we take a chariot ride, if you see what I mean. <laughs> Finally, there's a superb model in the museum depicting how it used to be. We then headed back to the hotel for dinner. After dinner, a walk in the garden in the moonlight reflected over Galilee. The Rom Beach Hotel has a first-class garden that even includes hammocks, which I suppose are for midday siestas or sunbathing. But they're great for stargazing Nate and Rachel enjoyed the moment and sang a song or two, it being close to Christmas. I'll sing in the chorus, you know. <laughs> Gotta we, love one another and not do my part. You don't need, need to <laughs> sing my part of the song. Okay, off you go. Oh, 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 the stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Oh, night if I If you didn't know they were crazy, you do now. So concluded the day in a hammock, stargazing on the shores of Galilee after a great day. Up early next morning to catch the sunrise over the Sea of Galilee. A lone fisherman follows in the footsteps of Peter, catching tilapia as in times past. The morning sun promising another great day as it appears over the Golan Heights. I've done this many times, and it's one of the reasons I love this hotel, though there are many more. I'm getting my shots, 
The kids are getting the first class Rom Beach Hotel orthopedic bed experience. Exploring. Okay, let me go. Then after breakfast with the view as usual, have a chat. The tour groups have already left. It's actually 8 or 3 a.m. What a great way to start the day. Today we'll have fun to begin with. We'll enjoy an activity enjoyed since before Roman times, the ancient Tiberius Hot Springs, a mile south of Tiberius. These thermal baths have been known for their curative powers for more than 3,000 years. They are some of the earliest known thermal baths in the world. Written of by Josephus and Pliny okay, do you bet. and many others. How's the water, Rachel? It's beautiful. <laughs> Here we are in Tiberius. The hot spring. So we had a relaxing hot spring and swim to start the day. You look like you're about to. I have no idea what he's doing. I'm gonna duck it. We have just been to the Tiberius Springs and we managed to sit in two different mineral pools and a sweet water pool too, which was about 10 degrees Celsius cooler. Beautiful, absolutely lovely. <laughs> It was fantastic even. The new word of the day. Fantastic. Beep, beep, beep. Ten points for me. <laughs> then back to the hotel to change. It's early December. A serene morning. And the plan today is to drive to Caesarea, 50 miles to the west, to visit the ruins there. This is going to be fun. Our final day. We're heading back to the airport in Tel Aviv via the ancient Roman port of Caesarea on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea and immediately are confronted by the iconic aqueduct. And for Rachel and Nate, a memory of previous visits when they were little. As such, it's very special. I still have footage of those trips in the mid-80s. Believe it or not, shot on VHS tape with an enormous camera that was connected to a recorder hanging on my shoulder. Nate was five years old, Rachel seven, and Dodie ten. That's me with the 4K Z100, still a big camera. Here's my shot. I suppose in those days Caesarea would have been pronounced Kaiseria, in Latin. That's where the German Kaisers got their names. The city was populated from the 1st to 6th centuries AD and was an important early centre of Christianity during the Byzantine period. 
but was destroyed during the Arab-Muslim conquest of 640. The five kilometers long aqueduct brought water into the city from sources inland. As this is a vlog, it includes all the fun parts. We certainly had a good time together. Caesarea! Beautiful city! <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful day! Caesarea! On the Mediterranean! <laughs> Having a beautiful time! <laughs> the ancient ramparts that protected the city. The entranceway, a later addition, probably built by Louis IX of France in 1251. We're having a beautiful time. It's a great day. It was fun to explore, right in the heart of ancient history. The striated road here, clearly Roman. We then strolled over to the old city of Caesarea, that we all remember from former visits. We loved walking around and exploring, as we all clearly remembered 1986 when we last came here together. It was a special memory. The ancient ruins have been restored here and it's a joy to explore. My camera is still too big. Nathan is using the AX100 and Rachel is happy to be free now and again hey. to explore. Now I know what I look like. Oh, it's so nice to have, not have to carry anything. The ruins of the ancient city, excavated in the 50s and 60s, and the site became part of the Caesarea National Park in 2011. This, the ruins of the Crusader Church, destroyed by Saladin in 1187. The ancient harbour. The mosque still stands. The Limani Bistro where we ate in 1986 still there, though the veranda where we ate is now enclosed. Many interesting things to do here. The last site the Apostle Paul had of Israel was here in 57 AD as he sailed from this harbour to Rome, being shipwrecked in Malta on the journey. So ends our amazing break. Rachel coming in from New York, Nate from London, and me arriving from Hong Kong. Special. Hope you enjoyed it. Now it's time to drive to the airport in Tel Aviv and back to London. We're on our way to Caesarea to 
check out the bum. Good night.